Aujourd'hui donc, mesdames et messieurs, nous parlons du cancer de la prostate. C'est une tumeur maligne qui se développe dans des hommes âgés d'au moins 65 ans. Et les chiffres officiels nous renseignent que 12 sur 100 hommes dans le monde souffrent du cancer de la prostate. Nous allons aujourd'hui rencontrer un médecin dans la personne du docteur Valérie Ngo. Il a eu plus d'un patient de la prostate, il connaît bien la maladie. Il va nous en parler dans cette édition de Health Update. Maintenant, allons retrouver Tatiana Mvondo. Elle était nos oreilles et nos yeux sur le terrain. Elle a rencontré des habitants de la cité capitale Yaoundé. Ils nous parlent de la prostate et de ce qu'ils en savent. La prostate est un mot qui crée toujours la confusion auprès de plusieurs personnes, car bien plus qu'un organe, est également considéré comme une maladie. C'est un organe qui est relié à l'appareil génital. Et maintenant, euh, c'est naturel, ça existe chez tous les genres masculins. Bon, maintenant, il peut y avoir dysfonctionnement au niveau de la prostate et puis ça fait en sorte que à un moment donné, ça grossit et ça empêche la circulation des liquides. C'est un organe. C'est un organe qui se développe. C'est d'abord un organe et c'est une maladie. Une maladie grave qui touche les personnes d'une tranche d'âge précise. Tout généralement, les, les personnes âgées, moins les jeunes. Je sais que le prostate, c'est à partir de cinquantaine. Hein. C'est à partir de cinquantaine. Parce que c'est rare de trouver un jeune de moins de, de 40 ans atteint de prostate. Généralement, c'est euh, le sexe masculin. Hein. Parce que je n'ai pas encore vu à mon... Euh, euh, à ma connaissance, euh, le sexe féminin qui a souffert de prostate. Toutes les maladies de prostate qu'il a suivies, c'est sur chez, euh, chez les hommes. Beaucoup gardent des souvenirs négatifs des méfaits de cette pathologie sur les personnes qui en souffrent. J'ai encore en mémoire mon, mon oncle qui est décédé le 5 juin à l'hôpital général. Ouais, il souffrait de la prostate et qui s'était transformé en cancer de prostate. Mon papa est mort de, de prostate. Il y a mon grand frère qui est toujours dans le prostate. Le cancer de la prostate est le cancer le plus fréquent chez l'homme. Son ablation est la solution radicale qui consiste à enlever des cellules cancéreuses afin qu'elles ne s'étendent pas ailleurs dans le corps. Connaissez-vous le cancer de la prostate Si oui, comment est-ce que ça se manifeste Qu'est-ce que c'est que le cancer de la prostate Nous allons en parler avec le docteur Valérie Ngoï, il est notre expert dans l'interview d'aujourd'hui. Suivez-moi. Now welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today we'll be talking about prostate cancer as I earlier said and we will be receiving a medical doctor in the person of Dr. Valerie Ngo. And uh, in today's edition we'll be talking about prostate cancer, how it manifests, how you can get it and how it could be averted. Good morning doctor and welcome to Health Thank you Dina. And how are you doing this morning? Everything is good, thank you. Well, as you may have noticed from the reports that preceded this interview, many people around the town of Yaoundé do not know what post-treat cancer is all about. Lauren Medwa met them. She asked around what post-treat cancer is, and uh, the reply that she got was mostly that it's an illness which affects older men from the age of 65. But what exactly is post-treat cancer? All right, post-treat cancer, as Riley said, is actually a disease that affects men only. So, because it is actually a disease manifesting from an organ that is only uh, present in men. Um, the prostate, I will try to uh, see how I can make it look, uh, I mean, I mean, in the way that, yes, for you able to understand. Um, it is actually a reproductive organ. And uh, what actually happens is that it is an organ that is located at the base of the urinary bladder for men. And uh, it actually links the urinary bladder together with the male reproductive organ. So what happens is that it is a kind of uh, an organ that is located at the junction between the bladder, then the testicles, then the penile shaft. Then directly behind it is actually the rectum. So it's not an abnormal organ right at the initial, I mean right from the beginning. It's an organ that has a lot of functions to do with the reproductive system. What happens is that when a normal male ejaculates during sexual intercourse, um, the 
prostate actually releases some um, fluid, we call it the prostatic fluid, seminal fluid, uh, which actually adds to the normal sperms that men release. And the essence of the prostate is that it gives that fluid that helps to lubricate the sperm, nourishes the sperm, and then the sperm is going to be able to perform its reproductive function. So when the prostate is not there, then it's almost impossible that uh, the normal human sperm is going to be able to fertilize the female egg. So it is an organ which normally is there in men, but unfortunately along the line, especially with advancing age, it becomes cancerous. I mean, it develops cancer. And you know, cancer is one of those illnesses that um, everybody dread. I mean, you, you don't just want to hear about it. Dread, yeah. So it, the issue is that it's at, with advanced age, the normal cells on the human body so at one moment refuse to obey um, normal growth phases. So each cell in the human body actually has what we call the DNA. So if something happened, uh, there are so many triggering factors anyway, but if something happened and then the DNA does not re get obey regulatory information from the central nervous system, what it means is that it's actually going to outgrow the normal re regulation that the system wants and then it becomes uncontrollable. So when a, pro a normal prostate starts growing beyond the amount expected, uh, we start to see it to either become a benign prostatic uh, disease, meaning a disease that might just be abnormal growth of the prostate, but if the growth now become uncontrollable, then it becomes a cancer. So can we, during the course of this program, call this prostate or we'll call it prostate cancer? So you call it a prostate cancer because the prostate is the normal organ. Mm -hmm. When it becomes a disease, it becomes a prostate cancer. So how is this cancer gotten? Um, what are the causes? Yeah, um, just like every other cancer in the human body, there is no direct cause of, uh, of a cancer, but we know that there are some predisposing factors. What actually studies have shown is that the prostate cancer is common now with advancing age. Mm -hmm. So the older the individual become, the higher the risk of the person becoming, um, developing prostate cancer. And then it also showed that uh, prostate cancer is commoner in black. The fact that you are a black male, oh, your wow. risk of, becoming, uh, of uh, developing prostate cancer become higher. Then other things uh, that are also related or predisposing risk factor also involve family history. So if you have a family history of prostate cancer, then there is also the higher risk of you developing prostate cancer as well. Then there are some genetic factors, um, there are the complicated genes, we call the BRCA1, BRCA2, which are common in people that have breast cancer, but as soon as you are having some of these, uh, there's that tendency that you can develop prostate cancer. But there are some modifiable risk factors, factors that have to do with diet, obesity, those are all factors that predispose to prostate cancer. So does this mean that um, younger men could not get prostate cancer? Uh, there is, you can never say never in medicine, but uh, there are always risk factors uh, that predispose to this. And it's not a, a disease that is common in younger males. So uh, it's possible there are newer researches that have shown that even younger males below 40 years also develop prostate cancer. Probably due to, um, I mean, there are so many environmental factors climate change, exposure to radiations, and then exposure, in fact, what we have what we call the chemo, uh, chemotherapeutic or chemo exposures that can actually trigger you to um, prostate cancer. Maybe someone who had exposure to x-ray before or anti-cancer drugs or another disease. So there are a lot of other things. So uh, the, most, uh, the most people who are most at risk of getting cancer are the older men and then what are the palpable symptoms what are the most palpable symptoms okay um prostate uh, cancer usually um is one of those diseases that grows very slowly and uh, before you start uh, observing symptoms or you start uh, finding symptoms in a patient most of the times the cancer has already started spreading so um we have what we call um symptoms that have to do with um, urinary symptoms, generally called the urinary symptoms, they have to do with either you have uh, urinary incontinence, I mean you, are, you find it difficult to hold urine, you could have urgency, there are a lot of men, elderly men, who we may see moving along the street, they feel they want to urinate, but before they get to the appropriate place where they want to urinate, they've already urinated on, uh, urinate on their panties, so we call those urgency, meaning they have it very difficult to hold urine. 
you know so those are some of the early urinary symptoms you see most of these symptoms are also common with those who have just uh, a benign enlargement of the prostate which is not yet cancerous they actually call that benign prostatic hyperplasia which is bph and uh, that symptoms may look like that of bph but when the prostate become more advanced i mean the prostate the prostate cancer become more advanced you may start having the people passing blood in urine some even pass blood in rectum because i mean through fecal matter because the prostate is directly in front of the rectum so when the prostate start eating the prostate cancer start eating into the rectum there's that tendency they may also pass to urine then issue relating to pain they start feeling pain yes they start feeling pain within the groin and then so many other symptoms and then and because prostate most of the time uh, when there's a cancer within the prostate it most of the time may statisize to bones so some of them may start telling you that they're actually feeling bone pain back pain and there are so there is that uh, those are some of the pointers to tell you that if there is a prostate there then probably it has metastasized to, uh, metastasized to the, bo the bones so now the Center for Disease Control estimates that 12 in every 100 men suffer from uh, post-treat cancer from these gross figures. Does this mean that this is the most common cause of the most common type of cancer after breast cancer? Yeah, I mean when you look at men per se, you say it is one of the most common cancer in men. Although they, most of the time studies are actually ranking second because of uh, pulmonary cancers as well. But uh, it's one of the high rising cancer because of the fact that, you know, uh, gradually most countries are beginning to have more uh, longer life expectancy because of maybe improvement in health status in most countries, improvement in economic standards. So you realize people tend to live longer in some countries and the more you get, you tend to live longer, the higher your chances of developing uh, prostate cancer. So you see it's as we pray to live longer, we are at risk of developing prostate cancer. So when should a man think that he is ready to get screening for post-trade cancer and uh, what does this screening involve? Yes, um, uh, usually we say if you are a high risk, we classify men into high risk or low risk. If, but generally when you're above 50, it is advisable you begin doing prostate cancer screening at least every year. But when you, are, you fall within the high risk, meaning that you have that family history, that either your father or a close relative of yours had prostate cancer, probably that individual had prostate cancer by the age of 50. That tells you that they are actually at the higher risk of developing prostate cancer. Though it's the best thing to do is probably at the age of 40 or more or less, you could start doing a, a digital rectal examination or the prostate, um, PSA, prostate specific antigen test. So the test basically, uh, there are two screening you do for prostate cancer. Um, one, is it, uh, one of it is actually just a digital examination where the healthcare provider or the doctor basically put gloves and then lubricate his finger and then go through the anus remember i told you the prostate is located very close to the anus and anatomically a normal prostate has a texture in which when you go into the anus you can actually feel a smooth prostate at the uh, within the inner cavity feeling it from the front mm -hmm. but when you are able to do a digital rectal examination you cannot feel this smooth consistency that and then perfect. probably the prostate will be getting rough may be eating into the rectum, so that could be a pointer. And then the, the, the tests that are available as well, the prostate-specific antigen PSA. Although um, people will tell you that uh, prostate, is, uh, prostate cancer could be in an individual and then the prostate-specific antigen might still be low because the normal prostate-specific antigen and, and an individual is estimated to about uh, 4.0 nanogram per meal. So when somebody is beginning to have a high prostate-specific antigen, that could also be a pointer to tell you that either the prostate is enlarged or it could be cancerous. So does this spread to other parts of the body? Oh. Or just when it's prostate cancer, it just remains in the prostate? I, I don't know why the prostate likes bones a lot. Because what happens is that immediately uh, an individual gets prostate cancer. It's a slow-grain tumor. And when it starts metastasizing, the first place it goes to is the limb node. And then from the limb node, it goes straight to the... In fact, almost 90% of cases, the prostate cancer goes to the bone. And then it begins eating up the bone. And then the individual will start complaining of pain in bony area. Usually the lower back pain and join as well. So people who suffer from uh, post-treat cancer, are they exposed uh, to different type of conditions? Like, do, Does any other illness come with uh, post-treat cancer, besides cancer, of course? No, prostate, uh, can, prostate just like it's a normal organ in the body and the prostate cancer itself is not like a risk factor for you to have another cancer. But one thing we should understand is that uh, whenever there is a cancer, 
um, it weakens the immune system and then you are also at the risk of developing other form of cancer or diseases as well. Is this curable? If yes, uh, what are the options that are offered to the patients? The, the, the prostate cancer is one of the diseases that can be cured if actually it is diagnosed early. Uh, the, uh, although they could be relapsed as well. But what happened is that we actually use the glassing scale to, to, to categorize um, the severity of the cancer. Cancer of the prostate progresses like any cancer of the body. When there's, the cancer is located within the prostate itself, the best form of treatment is to just remove the prostate. It's, it's like you removing. Does it affect the man in any way? Yeah, I mean, it is the truth. The, the truth about it is that it is either you allow the man to leave, or you remove. Yes, because the essence, the reason is that we believe that with advanced age, probably as common as the prostate is around 60 years and above, the man probably might have already finished his, his family life. Probably may not be so interested in having more babies. Mm -hmm. And remember, I told you that the prostate is very important in uh, nourishing the, the sperm, the semen. So if the prostate is no longer there, uh, it doesn't really affect the individual in terms of reproductive activities. But uh, in terms of uh, life, I mean living life, there are a lot of complications with the prostate removed. And remember, it is actually at the base of the urinary bladder. So the complications that you get is that the person may become uh, urinary incontinent, meaning they may not be able to control their urine. And then uh, if the person wants probably to still have sexual intercourse, the there's what we actually... That is interesting because what happened is that when they are removing the prostate, the nerves actually uh, die. No, the no. nerves actually are responsible for erection. Uh, they are actually at risk of being injured or being removed together with the prostate. So, oh, yeah. so you basically realize that erectile dysfunction is one of the complications that comes from there. And then a lot of them also as well, if they at least achieve erection and then they may have what we call retrograde ejaculation. Instead of the sperm coming out, it goes but into the urinary bladder. I see. So um, how long can a patient with prostate cancer leave or is it person dependent? Yes, just like I told you, if the cancer is actually diagnosed early, uh, there's a high chance that it is actually removed completely and then the person can live a normal life. But when it is diagnosed after the cancer has already spread, you know there are other forms of treatment that have to be uh, uh, provided at this stage, you could either do chemotherapy or in some situation you do radiotherapy. There are some advanced uh, um, um, uh, treatment technique like cryotherapy, they basically look um, liquid nitrogen and then the argon gas to, I mean, it's actually a method whereby you use extremely cold condition to kill these cancer cells. So you use cryotherapy in some situation, but Talking about how many years the person can live post um, treatment or if the person is diagnosed with prostate cancer, that depends on at what stage the cancer was actually diagnosed. Very well. So someone very close to me, to whom I say hi, um, was diagnosed with prostate cancer and says that, that uh, medicines like, well, not medicines, meals, um, salsa, onion juice, um, um, cassava, but cassava with an open pot can help uh, better this condition as a medic. Do you approve any of this solution? I won't really say I approve it because we use evidence-based medicine. Um, you know, just like I told you that one of the modifiable risk factors for um, prostate cancer is taking I mean, good diet, adequate exercise and most of what you call are actually related they are fruit related so there is a high tendency because when you take more fruit more vegetable we believe you're having a very good diet so that might uh, probably make you to live well but that does not actually go to treat your prostate cancer thank you doctor thank you so much uh, i believe uh, prostate cancer what i would say is a, is a disease that's real and um, with the more you become advanced in age, uh, the advice I would give is that always contact your doctor to do at least once, uh, I mean yearly digital rectal examination and then also check your prostate specific antigen level. If you can't do it once yearly, you could do that at least once every two years. It's very, very important because if a prostate cancer is diagnosed early, you are actually at the, uh, at the positive end of being cured completely. Thank you, Dr. Valerie. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And note that if you were diagnosed of prostate cancer, more treatments are actually currently available than ever before. Get to a hospital, take your treatment, and what's sure is that you're going to be safe 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet right behind with Valérie Naisomba. She comes back with the tips uh, of this week. La teigne, encore appelée dermatophysie, est une infection fongique de la peau qui provoque de plaques rouges, squameuses et démangeantes. Elle se manifeste aussi par des petits boutons et des pellicules. La teigne touche prioritairement les enfants. Pour venir à bout de la teigne chez nos tout petits, nous vous proposons quelques recettes naturelles, mais aussi nous vous proposerons des routines à adopter pour cette infection parasitaire. Tout d'abord, coupez les cheveux très courts afin de mieux traiter la maladie. Faire des massages à base de plantes naturelles à l'exemple de l'ail ou de la vera. L'ail étant considéré comme un antibiotique naturel, il suffit d'écraser une quantité suffisante, mélanger avec une huile essentielle pour obtenir une pâte homogène. La pâte ainsi obtenue, vous allez frotter sur la zone touchée et laisser agir pendant une quinzaine de minutes, puis laver. Cette opération doit être faite au moins deux fois par jour jusqu'à l'obtention du résultat. Quant à la Louise Vera, reconnue pour ses propriétés antiseptiques naturelles, vous prendrez une grosse feuille d'Aloise Vera, frottez le gel à l'intérieur de cette feuille et appliquez sur la zone touchée. Laissez le gel agir pendant au moins 30 minutes et les laver. Vous allez répéter cette opération deux fois par jour ou au moins cinq fois par semaine jusqu'à la disparition totale du problème. Notez tout de même que des solutions médicamenteuses existent au cas où celles naturelles ne s'avèrent pas efficaces. Parmi ces solutions médicales, nous pouvons citer entre autres des crèmes, des pommades ou des shampoings, mais aussi des traitements antifongiques administrés par voie orale. Pour éviter une éventuelle contamination de la teigne, quelques mesures peuvent être adoptées, notamment éviter le partage des objets des enfants avec d'autres personnes comme des peignes, des brosses à cheveux ou encore des bonnets et même des chapeaux. Veillez à l'hygiène des enfants, surtout en lavant leurs vêtements, draps et thés d'oreillers, mais aussi leur faire comprendre la nécessité d'éviter les contacts rapprochés avec les personnes contaminées. C'est tout pour notre astuce cette semaine et rendez-vous la semaine prochaine. It is on this note, ladies and gentlemen, that we draw curtains on this day's edition of Health Update on the African television. Let's continue the chit chat on post trait cancer on my Twitter page at Diana underscore Nguang. And if there is any other topic that you would like us to discuss, let's meet on our social media handles to talk about it. Until next week, for when the rendezvous is taken, stay healthy.